so i'll be using um this yarn for this project it's called baby sparkle knitting yarn it's 100 grams and um, it's a blend of acrylic and metallic yarn acrylic 95 percent and five percent uh, metallic yarn this yarn lives up to his name just check out the beauty sparkle of the yarn i cannot wait to see the outcome of um my project i'm quite excited to work with this yarn this has to be one of the not one actually the best yarn i've ever had to work with now i might be mixing it up with this white sparkle yarn as well i'm not sure yet so let's just see how that goes so i'll be setting my yarns aside now and um for this project we'll also be needing a measuring tape we'll be needing a pair of scissors we'll be using our stitch markers somewhere along the line and of course our crocheting hooks and for this project i'll be using um, a 2.5 um, millimeter hook it's not one of my favorite hooks to use but then because it's quite small I'm used to using um, bigger hooks, but then I have to use this 2.5 for this project because the yarn is quite um, small. Yeah, so um, let's dive into a project. Now to start, the first thing you have to do is to take a measurement of your um, hips. And um, for this client, her hip measures 41 inches. 41 inches yeah so i'll be um subtracting four inches from 41 inches so whatever your hip measures remember to subtract four from it and for me that gives me 37 inches and also okay remember to subtract four so mine is 37 and i'll be making a foundation chain that measures 37 inches when stretched yeah so um let's begin with a project okay so i'll set the yarn aside and um get your yarn ready let me set this aside over there yeah so get your yarn ready and um like we usually start most of our projects we'll be starting with a slip knot Okay, so just like that do your snip knots and then um, get your hook through the loop and begin to work your chains by yarning over pull through the loop yarn over pull through the loop and um, I'll keep doing this I'm not sure how many chains I have to do yet but I'll make sure that my um, foundation chain measures 37 inches when stretched so i'll go ahead with making this off camera and i'll meet you up when i'm done all right so um i finished making um my foundation chain and i'm stretching it out and you can see it measures exactly 37 inches please make sure that you stretch out your um foundation chain when taking the measurement okay so now i'll be setting um my measuring tape aside and we'll go ahead to straighten out our foundation chain make sure that it's not folded or you know just make sure you straighten it out properly like this because we're trying to like attach both ends of the chain together so with your hook still in that loop you put your hook through the very first chain you know that you started with the very first chain you find your way and put your hook through it just like that so now you're having two um, loops on our hook and then you get your um, the work the working yarn and then you pull your yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops so you're pulling your yarn through both the first and the last chain to form this very big loop like this so your work should look like this your foundation chain should be in a big loop now um begin working on our very first row and to do that get your working yarn 
and then um you'll chain three make a chain of three one two and three and then we go ahead to work a double crochet into the very next chain and to work a double crochet you yarn over your hook and then put your hook through the next chain grab a yarn pull through pull through the chain it gives you three loops on your hook grab a yarn pull through two loops grab a yarn and pull through the remaining two loops and now that's how to work a double crochet go ahead and work another double crochet into the next chain just like that so um this is um basically all we'll be doing for our row one we'll be working one double crochet into each chain make sure you don't miss any chain work a double crochet into each chain all the way around to get to the end of um, the row so I'm going to go ahead and work um, the remaining double crochet into each chain I'll do that off camera and I'll meet you up when I get to the end of um, my row one so just go ahead maintaining this pattern Work a double crochet into each chain all the way around till you get to the end. Make sure you okay. So I've worked my way around and I've gotten to the end of um, the chain. Now I'll be attaching um, both ends together. You can see that the top is kind of um, still separate so we have to attach it together so i'll do that by working a slip stitch and i'll put my hook through the um that chain three that we started with that very first chain three that we made so i'll work my i'll put my hook through and for me usually i like putting my hook through both loops and then um you should have something like that grab a yarn and i'll pull through that stitch um it's usually hard at times so i'll pull through gently yeah and then i'll pull through the loop so that's the way you work your slip stitch into both loops and that brings us to the end of row one and your work should be looking like this now moving on to row two we'll be starting just like we did with row one we'll be starting with a chain of three one two oops sorry about that two and three so work your chain three just like that and then we'll be doing something slightly different instead of working at the top stitch we'll be um working our double crochet around the posts the front and the back posts so we are working a double crochet around the first post we're actually going to be alternating between the front and back so put your hook through the um front posts by going through the back and through the front and then you grab a yarn pull through the post grab a yarn pull through two loops and grab a yarn and pull through the remaining two loops so that's a front post double crochet that we just made now the next one will be working through the back so you grab your yarn and put your hook through from the back to the front and all the way to the back again so that's a back post double crochet we're about to work now now grab your yarn and pull through the post and grab a yarn pull through two loops grab a yarn and pull through two loops and right there we have our back post double crochet so remember I said we'll be alternating between the front and the back so the next one is going to be a front post now put your hook through the back and back to the front now you grab a yarn and pull through the um, post grab a yarn pull through two loops grab a yarn pull through two loops now the next is going to be 
through the back post so remember all you're doing is working your double crochet through the front post and the back post you're alternating you do a front post first the next you do a back post the next you do a front post and then you maintain that pattern all the way round um row two you do that you get to the end of row two and i hope you're getting a hang of um this front and back post if you're yet to um, get a hang of it please feel free to um replay this portion of the video as many times as you have to till you get a hang of it so i'll go ahead and um i'll keep um at this pattern of front, alternating between the front and, and back post and i'll do this all the way round till i get to the end of the row and i'll be doing the remainder of this off camera and um, i'll meet up with you when i get to the end let me just show you a few more on the back yeah so go ahead and do this all the way around you get to the end and I'll meet up with you there okay so I've worked my front and back posts double crochet and I've gotten to the end of my row I have um, just one more and I'll be working, that'll be a back, um, a back post. I'll work my last double crochet into that back post. And um, yeah, that brings me to the end of my row two. And now um, your work should be looking like this. So we have to go ahead and work our sleep stitch to attach um, both ends together. So I'll put my hook through the first chain, um, the first three chains that we made on the top stitch just like that like i said i usually like working through both loops yeah so you put your hook through the um, top stitch of the chain three that you started with you grab a yarn and pull through and then pull through the other loop as well and that is how we close up our row two now moving on to row three we'll begin with a chain three just like we've been doing one two and three and um row three is basically a repetition of row two we'll be working front post um yeah front post and back post double crochet so i'm walking through the first post right now which is front and then the next one i'm walking through the back post i'll walk in my double crochet like that so just go ahead and repeat exactly what you did in row two you repeat it in row three you walk your front and back post double crochet alternating between both all the way around till you get to the end of the row so we're not really doing anything different at all just a repetition of row two in row three so I'll go ahead and um, continue working mine off camera and I'll meet you up at the end after I've worked my way all through to the end of the row. All right, so I've um, worked my way th all through to the end, and I'm about to work in my last two um, posts, and I'll be working uh, my double crochet in the front posts now, and just like that, pull through two and pull through two, and then the very last post I'll be working a back um, double crochet just like that and that brings me to the end of row three and now like we usually do we work our slip stitch 
on the top of our chain three the starting chain three you put your hook through the top of the chain three stitch and grab a yarn and pull through the stitch and uh, it's always hard at times yeah and then pull through the other loop and that brings us to the end of row three and that's how we um, finish it up now moving on to row four we'll be doing something slightly different from what we've been doing now but we're starting with our chain three as usual one two and three and now we'll be working only front panel front um post rather will not be alternating anymore between back and front post but rather just front post all through now let's get started yarn over put your hook through the front through the front post like that and work your double crochet and instead of alternating by making the next one a back post you're going to make it a front post so yarn over, you're going through the back and back to the front and work your double crochet. So we are maintaining the front posts, double crochet all through row four. We are not alternating between front and back anymore. Remember, you're working your double crochet through the front posts only. Just the front posts keep working your double crochet through the front posts all through row four so just maintain that pattern i'll keep at mine and um i'll work the rest of the row off camera working my double crochet in the front post only you see just like that you can see it's looking a bit different from what we had in row one and um, in row two and row three rather so just keep maintaining the pattern of working your double crochet around your front panel only okay so i'll meet you up when i get to the end of the row yes yeah, so i've worked my double crochet in the front panel only all the way around i have about two stitches to finish up this row or two posts rather to finish up the row so i work my front um post double crochet and in the very last one i work my front post double crochet and now we finish up the row by working our slip stitch like we've been doing i put my hook through the top of the chain three that we started the row with and then I'll grab a yarn and pull through the stitch and then pull through that loop to close up um, the row here yeah, so we should your work should be looking just like mine now yeah you're making a headway now moving on to row five row five is also just a repetition of row four we'll be working a double crochet through our front post only so it's just a repetition of row four and actually we're going to be repeating row four for the next 20 rows or 19 rows so to say minus row four so altogether we should be having um 20 rows of front post double crochet so it's basically just a repetition you keep working a double crochet around the front post only for row four to row so you have a total of row 20 um, um 20 rows rather so from row four five six all the way to you have a total of 20 rows of front post double crochet I think that should give us a total of 24 or 23 rows so just keep at it and um, remember that when you get to the end of your row always do a slip stitch to close up your row okay so I've gone all the way around with my front post um, double crochet and I ended up doing a total of um, 35 rows 
I recall seeing that we were going to meet up at the end of um, row 20, but I had to do th um, 15 extra. And for me, that measures um, from the high waist, from the navel area, to the widest part of the lower body, which is the hips. Mine measures about 11 inches. So I had to do an additional 15 rows in order to, um, you know, get my desired length. Yeah, so feel free to alter you know um the amount of rows you have to do to get your desired length yeah so w the number of stitches i give at times is just like a guide for you yeah so now i have uh, my 11 inches which starts from the navel which is a high waist um, style up to the um hip area yeah so um moving forward from this um from this part would have to start working on the reduction yeah and to work on the reduction you would first need to identify the sides of your skirt so we'll be identifying um, the sides um, yeah for me so this is my side and um, I'll be marking it with a stitch marker because that's the point where our reduction is going to take place so I wouldn't want to like get carried away or miss that part so feel free to get a stitch marker you know to mark the left side of your skirt and go ahead and do the same thing for the other side marking the um, two sides of your skirt okay so um once you've identified the sides of your skirt then we can go ahead to um from this middle point we, we are basically repeating what we've been doing you chain three and then work your front um post double crochet until you get to that point where the stitch marker is which is the side of your skirt so i'm just going to continue with that pattern and i'll meet you up at the end of uh, once i get to that um stitch marker okay so i've worked my way from that middle point to where my stitch marker is and this is where the reduction is going to take place and um, to do that we are just um, going to work our double crochet just like we've been doing in the front um, post but instead of picking just one post like we've been doing in order to work our reduction um, let me zoom this in a bit yeah so in order to work our reduction we'll be picking two posts at a time so instead of picking just one we're picking two posts at a time to work our reduction so you put your hook through two posts and then you work your double crochet um front posts just like you've been doing so um the only difference here is that you're picking two posts at a time instead of one and you're going to be working that reduction only at that point once you're done working the double crochet around the two posts you go ahead and place your stitch marker um, just to keep marking that part and then you continue working your you know just one post double crochet like we've been doing all the way around till you get to the other side where the second stitch marker is so just keep working your front post double crochet and then i'll meet you at the other side once i get there okay so i've worked my front um post double crochet all the way around and i've gotten to the other side of my skirts where i have my second stitch marker and so i'm just going to go ahead and work um my reduction just like we did at the other side okay so you go ahead and um, yarn over and then put your hook through two posts instead of one you put your hook through two posts to work your reduction and then um you work your double crochet just like you've been doing yeah so once you're done with that particular spot remember to place your stitch marker back there for those who might not you know be able to identify that spot easily so you place your stitch marker back there and then you go ahead to keep working your front post into just one um, post 
each till you get to the middle point so once you get to the end you you join your two ends just like we've been doing with the slip stitch and then um, another thing you need to note at this point is that you're going to have to be alternating um, a reduction row and a no reduction row so this particular row we are about to complete is the reduction row and the very next row you're going to do after this one you're not going to work any reduction so it means that once you get to the point of your stitch marker you're just going to place one double crochet into one post only you're not going to pick two posts yeah so you're going to do that all the way around for the next row and then the row after that you're going to work your reduction and then the next row there will be no reduction and then the next row there's going to be a reduction so this is the pattern you're going to maintain you know alternating between reduction and no reduction for the next 20 rows so that means that you're going to be having 10 rows of no reduction and 10 rows of reduction i hope you get that okay so i've gone all the way around working my um, decrease and no decrease row and all together measuring from the you know top part of the skirt i have a total of about 20 inches i think that's the desired length the client wants and um, now we'll be moving on to the upper part of our gown and to do that we would have to reattach our yarn um, at the very beginning and um, to identify that just um, reattach your yarn at that part where you have your um, yarn hanging loose yeah so that's the very beginning so you reattach your yarn just like this by working a slip stitch and then reattaching your yarn with a chain one to secure to secure the stitch i think for me i'm reattaching it right above um, my turning chain three yes yeah, so um just like we've been starting our previous rows you chain three one two and three and then because um for the upper part of the gown we have to make um, it a bit smaller yeah, because usually the upper part of the body is kind of smaller than the lower part so we'll be working um, a decrease and um, to do that we'll first work our front post double crochet just like we've been doing you know just work it like that in the first one go ahead and work another front post in the second one you work another front post double crochet in the third and then you work okay that's four all together now and then in the fifth one you work your um decrease so instead of picking just one post you'll be picking two posts i guess by now we're already familiar with this decrease method so just like you worked it at the bottom of our skirt we'll be doing working our decrease but the only difference now is that we're going to be working our decrease after every fourth front post double crochet so we have four already I'm counting my turning chain as the first one but you can feel free to you know work your own five double crochet um, front post double crochet excluding the turning chain but for me my turning chain counts as my first post so after working your decrease you go ahead and keep working one post double crochet you work it in the next one till you have a total of four and then after the fourth Front post double crochet you go ahead and work your decrease so this is going to be the pattern for this row working your decrease after every fourth um, front post double crochet so you're going to do four front post and then work your decrease so you maintain this pattern all the way around and um, I'll do the same thing and um, I'll do that off camera and I'll meet you up when I get to the end of this row. Okay, so now that we have gone all the way around with our um, decrease pattern for the um, upper part of our gown, I'm finishing up my row now and we'll be joining both ends just like we've been doing by working a slip stitch, you know, on the top part of the turning chain three and just to close up and finish off this row yeah so now we've been able to um you know work our 
decrease which is the foundation for the top part of our gown and then for the next row we're going to start by chaining three as usual and for this row there'll be no decrease at all we've already you know um laid the foundation for our decrease and now what we're going to do in this row is just to um work one front post double crochet each all the way around so don't forget that we're not working any decrease at all for this particular row just work one double crochet in each post front post you know all the way around okay so i'm gonna go ahead working my um, front post double crochet and i'll meet you when i get to the end of the row okay so i've gone ahead to work my front post double crochet with no decrease all the way around and then moving on to the next part of um this gown up um i'll be starting this row with um a chain five you know this is going to be starting with a chain five unlike the chain three that we've been doing and then um let me zoom in a bit yeah to make it clearer okay so um after working your chain five and then this time around we'll be we'll not be working around our post anymore we'll be working on the stitch so we're going to count three stitches and on the fourth stitch we're going to be working our single um crochet so one two three and in the fourth stitch you work a single crochet so this is going to be the um like the midriff part of our gown and it's going to be mesh all through okay so we're going to continue with this pattern you chain five again one two three four and five and then you skip three stitches one two three and in the fourth stitch you work a single crochet so this is going to be the pattern um, for this row and you do that all the way around till you get to the end so I'll do mine off camera and I'll meet you at the end to show us how to um, join okay so I've gone all the way around and I'm doing my very last part I've done my chain 5 and then I'll be working my single crochet into that very beginning if by the time you get to the end of your row and you have more than um, maybe three or four stitches you can just go ahead and skip everything all together so um, <clears throat> once I've done that to, to move on to the next row we we'll first have to work a slip stitch into the first three um, chains of the previous row so just watch closely as I'm doing mine I put my I'm putting my hook through the first chain and working a slip stitch I'll go ahead into the second chain I always try to pick both loops of the chain so that's why I'm struggling a bit so I'm picking both loops and then working my second slip stitch and then into the very third chain I'm going to work my third um, slip stitch so this is how you're going to be starting each row for this mesh area remember that you always have to start by working um, a slip stitch into the first three stitches because it gets you to the middle of the chain then you go ahead and chain five and then you can um, continue with your mesh so um, something a little different in this row as well um, you're going to be working a slip stitch this time around into the middle you count three and then you work a slip stitch you'll recall that in the previous row we are working a single crochet after chaining five but this time around once you chain five you count three um, chains which brings you to the middle of the chain five and then you work a slip stitch so you no longer be working a single crochet what you'll be working is a slip stitch so you're going to maintain that pattern you chain five you count three chains which gets to the middle of the chain five and then you go ahead and work a slip stitch so you're going to maintain that pattern all the way around till you get to the end remember once you get to the end and you're about to start the next row um row yes you make sure you do a slip stitch into the first three chains 
okay so i've gotten to the end of my row two of our mesh area <clears throat> and i'll be working my you know final um slip stitch into that um you recall the first three slip stitches that we have that we started with yes yeah, so you're going to work your slip stitch just at that you know very point to close up and finish off your row and then to start your third row of the mesh area remember to work three um, slip stitches into the first three chains to get you to the middle don't forget to always do that it's very important to work three slip stitches into the first three chains of um, to start your next row so that's my first slip stitch into the second chain I'm working my second slip stitch and into the third I would work my very last slip stitch and now I'm you know from here I'm able to you know continue with my row three so I'll go ahead and chain five and then into the next um, space I'll work my um, slip stitch into the third chain which brings us to the middle of the chain five you chain five again and work a uh, slip stitch into the third chain so you keep at this and to finish off your row three remember to do your final slip stitch into that particular place where you started with your first three slip stitches um you can replay this part so you get a hang of it okay so i've gone ahead to work my mesh area and to count um the amount of or the number of um, rows for the mesh area because you might not remember to keep counting when you're doing it you have to count diagonally and measuring my mesh area i think i have about 3.5 or 3, 3 inches yeah when not stretched i have about 3 inches so this measurement could also help you in determine to determine how long you know you want your mesh area to be and then when i stretch it i have about four inches okay now um moving on to the next part um i'll first have to finish off this mesh area by chaining one and um pulling my yarn through and cutting off the yarn and we'll be moving on to the top part of our gown I'm happy because we are gradually getting to the end of this project. Yes, yeah, so um, if you look closely at the skirt part of your of this project, you would notice that we have like a middle point. You know, you would notice like a line, and because um, of the mesh area, it actually it naturally took us to a slant. Yes, yeah, so we have to work to maintain that middle part. You know we'll make sure that the top part aligns with our, our bottom part so that was why we had to cut off the yarn and now we have to reattach our yarn so you have to determine where your middle point is by tracing that line from the bottom part, like the skirt area and then identify your middle and then reattach your yarn at that exact particular point so just try to trace it so I found my own middle point and I'm going to secure my yarn after reattaching it and then I'll chain three just like we've been doing and that chain three um, working now is going to be my turning chain yeah it's going to be my turning chain because my own middle point brought me to the um, slip stitch part so it depends on where your middle point takes you to if it's in the space then it's not going to count as a turning chain so my own middle part got me to the slip stitch area so that's going to count as my turning chain and then because when we're working on the mesh area we were skipping three chains so we're going to go ahead now and work three double crochets into that space so the three double crochet we're working into that space makes up for the three stitches that we were skipping um when we're going to start our you know mesh area so you see that it aligns with that um three stitches we skipped and then always work one double crochet into the 
um, slip stitch area as well so after walking through um, three double crochets into the space you walk one double crochet into that slip stitch yeah so into the next space you go ahead and walk three double crochets and then after that into the slip stitch you walk one double crochet so that's um, the pattern you're going to maintain all the way around walking three double crochets into the space and then one double crochet into the um, slip stitch please don't forget to walk your one double crochet into um, the slip stitch area so I've gone all the way around walking my three double crochets into the space and one double crochet into the um, slip stitch area and I'm walking my last set of double crochets and because my own you recall that when I reattached my yarn I started with the turning chain which was that chain three so all I need to do is just to walk my slip stitch to join both ends together and that brings me to the end of um, other row and then moving on to the next row you chain three just like we always do and then this time around you go back to working your front post double crochet only remember you're going to be working just your um, front post double crochet and you do that all the way around when you get to the end you do a slip stitch and um, so I'm just going to keep doing this until I have my desired length and I'll let you know how many so I've gone ahead to work um, my front posts double crochet all the way around till I got my desired length and I did a total of 22 rows and For me that measures about seven inches I believe this is going to give very full coverage to the bust area because it's still going to be stretched actually Yeah, so I feel this seven inches is actually perfect for me and then I'll just set my um, measuring tape aside and We're going to begin work on the sleeve but before i do that i'm going to finish up this row by chaining one i'll cut off my yarn and then i'll pull through to secure it and um once i'm done with that we can then proceed to the final is that the final yeah the final which is the sleeve part i'm a bit more excited now because i can't wait to finish this project yeah so um for the sleeve area i did a lot of modification i did that to suit my own um specific um goal because i actually want my sleeve to be wider and i want it thicker so i doubled my strands to achieve that and um I'll, i made a slip knot we'll be doing that to reattach our yarn to the specific point we are starting our sleeve from and another thing to note is that I turned um, the dress inside out and I had to do that because of the modification because I'll be doing two rows of the sleeve instead of one so I had to turn my dress the dress inside out and then from the middle point which is very obvious from the inside out you can see that straight line I counted um, 19 stitches from that middle point I, that did include my um, you know that three turning chain I always start with I didn't include it so I counted 19 stitches and then I placed my stitch marker there so that's going to be the um, start point for my sleeve and then I went ahead and counted another 13 stitches from the middle point and then I placed the stitch marker so now to start the sleeve um, I'll be reattaching my yarn at that very first that's the 19th stitch from the middle where I placed that uh, my green stitch marker so I'm going to reattach my yarn there and then once I'm done with that let me just get this off okay okay so I'll, I'll insert my hook right at that um, at the top of the stitch there and then I would um, secure the yarn after which I'll go ahead chain one to secure um, the reattached yarn after reattaching my yarn, I then went ahead to chain um, to work 50 chains. So I chained 50, um, but you can also um, do um, as many chains as you need to do to get your desired length. So it could be less or it could be more. But I I did um, 50 chains for this particular project. 
Okay, so once I completed my 50 chains, I um, went ahead to reattach or to attach um, the chain to the other side of, you know, the gown. So that's like the, you know, front side of the gown. So I reattached with a slip stitch at that point that I already marked out. So you just need to like um, determine the exact opposite side, you know, of the gown and then just place the chain into it with a slip stitch so once you've done that you've attached your chain and that's like the foundation of the sleeve so now because i want okay so we need to go to the other side we're going to work three slip stitches into the next three stitches so that's my first sti um, slip stitch then into the second one i work another one that's two and then into the third i work my third slip stitch now after you've done this you're going to flip your work you would flip your work to the other side yeah so that other side will be facing you now and then you go ahead to work one double crochet into each stitch or into each chain rather making your way back to the other side so you keep working one double crochet into each chain make sure you don't miss any one so you um, walk your way to the back to the other side where we started from okay so i'm just going to continue off camera i'll meet you at the end all right so i've walked my way back to the other side back to the starting point and now i'm going to um insert my hook into the third chain so i'm skipping two chains and into the third chain i'll work a slip stitch to um attach the other end of the sleeve now we're going to work three slip stitches again into the next three stitch which will get us into that next stitch marker you recall i said i want mine wider so i'm making i'm doing like two sets of um these sleeve instead of just one then I, I, I flip my work and then I start to work a double crochet just basically a repetition of what we did previously so I work one double crochet each into every stitch working my way back again to that other side so I'm having to do this because I want my sleeve to be wider okay so after working my way through um, the other side I'll be attaching that sleeve to the other end at that point where the stitch marker is with a slip stitch and um, that brings us to the end of this um, sleeve so i'm just going to chain one i'll cut my yarn and then pull through to secure so with this we've completed our sleeve and now we just have to work on the um, chain part of the sleeve yeah so um for the chain part of the sleeve um i'll first have to turn my work back out um you would notice that i've already um, done one part of it and let me just run you through how i did that so after turning your dress back out to the right side you will determine um the middle of your sleeve you identify it and then you go ahead and place a stitch marker there at the middle of your sleeve the middle stitch and then you count one two in the second stitch away from that middle stitch you place you reattach your yarn you know two stitches away from that middle stitch we marked you reattach your yarn and secure it with a chain one attach it and secure it with a chain one and for me, because I'm going to be adding beads to the chain sleeve this time around, I would have to um, cut um, a very long, a long yarn, a very long strand rather. And then I'll put the end of that strand into a needle eye and then that makes it very easy for me to um, work in the beads through into the yarn. Yeah, so um, just find um, the right needle size that can fit into the hole of the bead. Yeah, so I worked in, you know, as many beads as possible into the um, needle, into the yarn through the needle. And once I'm done with that, I went ahead to 
push those beads very close to the working yarn and um, I then went ahead to chain one when I went ahead to chain one after chaining one I pushed one bead down close to the chain one then I went ahead to chain three making it a total of four chains now went ahead to put one bead down then I chained another three making seven then I pushed another bead down then I work another three which brings us to a total of 10 chains then I push another bead down because I do not want that bead to just start moving around I chained another one just to secure it but I'm not going to count that so I'll go ahead to the other side of um, the stitch marker I'll count two stitches just like we did for the other side so from the middle point where the stitch marker is you count one and two so in that second stitch you insert your hook and then work a slip stitch to attach um, that row into that side so you work your slip stitch so that way you've attached our very first um, row of chain sleeve okay moving on to the next row you do a slip stitch into the next stitch into the very next stitch work a slip stitch there and that's the beginning of our second um, row so you chain one and then push one bead down you chain three push uh, yeah you chain three push one bead down so you have a total of 20 chains and then you go ahead and attach that second chain sleeve to the other side again so don't forget to always attach it to the other side so into the very next stitch i attached the second row of the chain sleeve or the second chain sleeve then to start our third chain sleeve you go into the next stitch with a slip stitch don't forget to always go into the next stitch with a slip stitch before you start your next chain sleeve so once i work my slip stitch into that next stitch i go ahead and chain one i'll keep dropping dropping the bead chain three drop the bead until i have a total of 30 and for the fourth chain sleeve you do 40 for the fifth one you do 50 for the sixth one you do 60 so you keep increasing by 10 until you have your desired length so this is what my chain sleeve looks like i did a total of 11 um, chain sleeves meaning that i did um, 110 chains so um, like i usually say you can adjust this to suit your own need so you can do as long as 140 or 120 but this is exactly what mine looks like if you enjoyed this video do not forget to give it a thumbs up and also please hit the follow button keep crocheting till we meet again bye